Hey, it's Mr. Wilson. We're going to talk about how to edit your eight shots animatic video in WeVideo. So first of all, we're going to go to our Google Slides where we have our eight shots. And we're going to go to File, Download, JPEG. Once that's done, we should see at the bottom of the tab that the picture has been downloaded. And now we do the same thing with all the other frames. All the other pictures, we turn them into JPEGs. Obviously, I'm speeding this up. A lot of this video and many of my tutorials will be sped up. So I'm just going to File, Download, JPEG, File, Download, JPEG. Now I'm going to go to Wii Video. I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to make sure it's called 8 Shots Animatic. And my name, always make sure your name is in it. It's a personal project. Click Next. And then we will click Create Video. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to My Video and rename the video. I just copied and pasted, so I'm just going to paste 8 Shots Animatic Zach Wilson. Then I'm going to go into my Downloads folder, select all of the clips that I just downloaded, and enter them. Just click and drag into Wii Video. Now, I'll start by adding my title, so I go up to Text. This is where I'll find all my titles and my lower thirds. I'll drag it into the timeline, and this is where we go to edit our clips. So this icon right here is where we are going to go to edit all of our clips. Lots of things we can do there. I click on properties, make sure my properties is selected. And then in these boxes, that's where I type my title. So eight shots video, click save changes. And I have my eight shots video title card. Then I'm going to go back to my media and I'm going to select all of my clips that I, all of these still clips that I selected, put them in there and it says, do you want them to be five seconds long? That's fine, I'll keep that because I'm going to edit. I'm going to unapply the Ken Burns effect. You do not want that applied to your still images. And then I'm, I'm going to just put them in the right order because they're kind of all out of order and I want them in the right order from extreme close up to long shot and then medium close up and insert shot. So here I'm just reordering them. And this has obviously been sped up as well. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing is going up to narrate. Click narrate at the top and I'm going to click to record my narration. And I'm going to go back to the slide to make sure that I have all the information correct. This is an extreme close-up. My name is Zach Wilson. This is a close-up. I live in Silver Spring, Maryland. When you're done with your voiceover, you click stop. You can preview it, but you can just click save and it will be in your timeline. So down here in my timeline, that's where my voiceover is. Now I'm going to time it out, so I'm going to listen. This is an extreme close-up. And I'm going to try to time it out so that it, my correct information is on the correct shot. This is an extreme close-up. My name is Zach Wilson. This is a close-up. So now I'm going to put my playhead, try to get it right, right there. And so I'm going to now click the scissors icon here. If I click the scissors icon, it will cut my clip right where my playhead is. And then I can click on that second part of the clip, which is what I want to get rid of. And I just hit delete and it will be gone. That's one way to edit clips by cutting where we want. This is a close up. I live in Silver Spring, Maryland. Now I'm just going to be timing it out. This is a medium. Listening to the clips and sushi. dragging them and trimming them and cutting them. I can also zoom in here. It will actually really help when we zoom in. Instead of cutting, I'm actually going to trim this clip which I do by putting my cursor at the end of the clip and getting this arrow. Now I can drag it to the left. You can drag it to the left or the right. You can trim on or off material. Really the same thing as cutting. Two different ways of getting the same thing done. Now I'm just timing this out. We're not going to hear my voiceover anymore. I'm just going to be going through this and timing it out. With the full length shot, I'm actually going to want to copy and paste it. So I'm timing out this long shot. Now I'm going to copy and paste it. And with the full length shot, I want two of them because the full length shot we're also going to use as a long shot. So there's my medium close up, there's my insert shot, and I'm just moving my voiceover around, moving the clips around to time it out. Hopefully this is fairly self-explanatory. Now, once I've done with that, I'm going to need to put my end title. It doesn't really matter what you pick. I'm clicking this trailer slash, so I'm just gonna drag it down. And again, click on this to edit my clip go up and right now I'm on transform. What I want is to go up and click on properties, which is there. Properties will get me to the place where I actually type in my title. So I'm just going to say those were the eight shots. And that will be my last title. You can have whatever you want 
at the end, but I do want you to have something. Click Save Changes, and there we go. There's my ending title card. Now we're going to go to Audio. We need music through that, the whole thing. You can just use a piece of Wii Video music if you want. You can use a piece of media from outside of Wii Video if you know how to import it. If you don't, we can learn later, but for right now, you can just use a piece of Wii Video music. One thing, always turn it down to about 50% volume. Wii Video, the natural volume is way too loud, so I always turn the audio down to about 50% for their music. And then we're going to want to click on the volume levels and turn it down to 0%. Every time you click on the volume level, you get a little dot. And we're going to turn it all the way down to 50%. Here, I'm actually making my fade down a little bit longer. I'm going to cut it and delete the end of that music. And I'm going to play it here. And I hear that it's too loud. The music's too loud, so I'm going to put two more dots on that volume line. And I'm going to turn it down even from 50% to even lower because I really want my voiceover to not be muffled or covered by the music. I'm going to do the same thing at the end. I turned it down to about 24% and then I'm going to have it turned down. Now I've listened to it and I've said, no, I need my voiceover to be louder. I click on the volume level and I can turn that up. So I've turned my vo voiceover up. I've turned my music down and now I'm going to go to text and start to add my lower thirds. So my lower thirds are down at the bottom. Any of the lower thirds you want, you can pick. I'm going to be using star lower thirds. So that's what it looks like. I click on it, I drag it down. I'm going to add a video track here by clicking plus, video track, add track. Now I have another track for me to put that lower third up on top of the clip that I wanted on. And I'm going to put my title, which is going to say ECU for extreme close up and then my name which is Zach Wilson then I click save changes and the lower third will appear over my video clip now you might notice that I accidentally labeled this MCU instead of ECU I will go back and fix this later but I will also add the entire name of the shot as well so ECU extreme close-up this is what I want you to do as well and I also change the color to black and change the font to make it easier to see and now I'm gonna put the lower third over the close-up so I do that go to properties I put CU and my information is that I live in Silver Spring. And now I'm going to continue doing the lower thirds on all of these. Again, at the end, I'm going to make these lower thirds black because I realized afterwards it's way too hard for you to read these words white on white, which is bad design. So you never want light text on light background or dark text on dark background. You always want it to contrast. So I'm going to change it to, uh, to these words to black, and I'm also going to change the font. But for right now, I'm just putting the lower thirds over them. Now you'll notice that I'm going to be lifting the green screen shots to the video track above, and then I'm also going to be going and adding another video track because I need to put the lower thirds on them. But I'm also going to stock media and use the stock media as a background for these shots. So here's stock media, and once I go there, I can go into the search bar and type in whatever I want to see what I can look for. So not flag, but let's say forest. I'll have this person standing in a forest. So once I get a good forest picture, and I'm going to want a still image, not a video image. So the still images are near the bottom. Once I find the picture that I like, I'm going to drag it underneath the shot that I want it for. So right now it's not visible because the only thing that we can see is the shot on top. But I go to edit and I go up here to chroma color key and click that dropper. And then I need to defringe because there are too many holes in that yellow. So I can see that defringe really fixes it. So there's my knee shot with the person standing in the forest. For my full length shot, I'm going to have a living room. So I got a shot of a living room. Again, go to edit, get the dropper, defringe, and then I'm going to put my lower third on it. Same thing for the long shot. Key it, defringe it. Now I'm going to transform it so it's smaller because this is a long shot, so I'm going to be very far away. So I can scale it and then I can move it on the screen wherever I want. So I'm going to put him kind of standing behind this tree over there. So it's a very long shot. It's from far away. So that's a long shot. Now I'm going to add my lower third, LS, long shot. Now here I'm going to try to see if I can get my font 
bigger by going to manual and making it easier to see, but then I realized that that's not going to do it. So I changed my font to this one, and that font is nice and thick. And so I'm actually going to go back and change the font of all of my lower thirds so it's much easier to see. Now I just do the lower thirds to my medium close-up profile and put the lower third on my insert shot. I'll always label my insert shot as a CU because insert shots are always going to be close-ups. So I'm going to say CU insert shot. Then additional information about you, any kind of additional information for me, it's that I love ice hockey. Now I click finish. When I'm done, I make sure I click on HD because I want the best quality and then I'm going to make sure that it says my name in the title. I also click on Google Drive so that I will have a copy. Click export, and then it will export into my Google Drive, and when I turn in my project on Canvas, I will have it in my Google Drive.